What up folks? Overtime here. Coming to you from a hotel room. We in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, everything was pretty smooth. A lot of people's guns and weapons got stuck in customs in Toronto. So uh, the bow isn't here yet, but they said it'd be here tonight. Flight coming in at like midnight. Hopefully everything arrives, arrives safely and timely. So we'll be fine so we can get right to hunting. Um, hotel room is pretty nice. Got it pretty cheap. So far, people were nice. Everybody I sat next to on the plane was very talkative and friendly. You know, everybody was coming out here for hunting. It was a plane full of hunters. So, uh, we out here again. We're hunting the big white tail. So, hopefully, we get a big one down. Uh, my man Sean Legal said he's been seeing some good ones on camera. When he figure out where the one he want me to take is at, that's where he's going to put me. And, uh, so, either be a blind or a tree stand. Other than that, we're just going to hang out. About to go grab a bite to eat and uh, chill till we get here. You see we got everything loaded. I'm on the Canon camera. We got the Tacticam. I got the GoPro. I got another Tacticam on the bow in the case. So uh, we got Badlands. He's got the heated bodysuit. Man, I'm ready to go. It's going to be cold tomorrow and Monday and the rest of the time it's going to be okay. So uh, looking forward to this trip. So low dolo. Let's get it. Morning, folks. It's 7 a.m. Uh, November 10th. Uh, Sean is here at the hotel as well. The one I got dinner last night. Uh, I've been up for a while. I was in my push-ups, sit-ups, you know, morning workouts. I'm not in the gym. You know, gotta stay physical, stay fit. Let's go. But uh, I hit the shower. Meet up with Sean in the lobby. Um, we go get breakfast. Better go to Cabela's, pick up some stuff for the hunt, and we're heading to the lodge. So the next time we bring the camera out, probably be while we're on the road, driving on the back road to Saskatoon. It's cold. He says it's icy and slick out. So uh, should be some good sights to see. But yeah, we're on our way to camp today, baby. And I don't know if we start hunting tonight or tomorrow, but either way, we're gonna get some hunting done. And I'm excited. Show me some deer on camera, and I can't wait to see him in the blind or the stand. All right, but uh, we'll make sure we get your introduction to Sean Legal when we get to him. But for now, I'm ranking dang. Time to hit the shower. Truck now on the way to camp. Uh, about a three-hour drive, three and a half. Uh, looking forward to this. Seen some pictures on the camera. You now we got the snow out here. You love snow when you're deer hunting. It makes it so much easier to see and track with the blood. But now we're going to introduce you to the man of the hour, the man Sean Legal, the guy, the owner. He's going to talk to you. Let us know what's going on. What's up, Sean? So what we got going on this week? Where's the plan? We have some good cold weather and uh, lots of deer moving, scraping, and uh, chasing does around. It's going to be a great week. We uh, got about a three-hour drive to camp here. Get out. Corey's going to shoot his bow a bit. Tomorrow morning, we've got some action happening. Yeah, man. It's nice and cold. Right now it's negative 15, if you don't believe, look at that. Negative 15. Yeah. So I got to get some practice reps in this. Make sure I can still feel my hands and find my trigger. But uh, that's another good thing about having that carbon PSE. You know, it's not the aluminum riser like I used to have with the older bows I used to shoot. When you hold those, even with a glove, your hand freezes and it goes down your arm. And it kind of, it makes it hard to hold the bow. Nice to have to wrap it in mold skin and different things. But now with the carbon bow, you know, whatever it is, when you get out the case, what it's going to be when you understand. It'll be a little cool, but once you put your hand on it, it'll warm up to your temperature. So I'm excited for that. But uh, the bow showed up this morning, like the airport said. Everything was intact. Got my release. The arrows are intact. Last time I came, I put my plano case. Like it broke one arrow, and all the stuff on the inside was broken. It was throwing everything around. But that Pelican Air did its job. 
kept everything concealed, kept it tight. And the backup backup site made it in the same position I sat in there and nothing moved. So we're gonna get there and make sure from the vibration, the sights and everything is still on. We're gonna shoot out to about 50, 60 yards for the just in case. The furthest blind, he said it's set at 50, but we're gonna be ready for 60 just in case. And uh, I'm excited, excited to get this week started. We're seeing some big deer on pictures. Uh, when we get to the lodge, I'll show you some some stuff and show me the computer. Some of the ones are going after some hit listers and just the different things out here. But uh, it's gonna be an action-packed weekend with a lot of footage. All right, guys, see you when we get to camp. Blank your next In and out like a robbery. Inintentionally. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You're not leaving during Tosh. My type of place. No neighbors. Oh, I see him up there. And there's one up there in the, in the path. Yeah. We're right here. This is the grand opening to the camp. Nice welcoming. I trained them to do that. <laughs> Another small little buck is up there chilling. He's home sweet home for the next week. Oh, you got alfalfa right there. So he's still sitting there hanging out. That's the grand welcome I'm looking for. Deer already moving near the cabin. Nothing crazy to shoot, but it's always fun to see deer. I'm definitely excited for this week. So right now, just getting all this crap mixed up out of the pack. Getting all out, air it out. Spray it down with the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, let me shield from the spray. Trying to get some natural stuff. Folks, all right, so it's about five o'clock out here, coming to the end of the night. Got back from setting up all the stuff. Um, of course, after traveling, definitely on the plane, they throw your bow and stuff around. First thing we gotta do, so you gotta make sure the sights and stuff still on. So, 
got suited up just like I'm hunting tomorrow, everything but the orange vest. Um, sitting at 20 yards, I got three field tips, and one of the tips I'll actually be shooting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot the field, make sure we still on. Uh, <clears throat> then after that, I'm gonna shoot just the bra here one time. If that's on, if it's the same, I can go ahead and shoot the all oh, field tips. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go with the bra here first, so that way I don't cut none of the fleshings off my practice tips. Now we got 30. Good thing I like about this one. This bow, or this sight, the spot hawk, as fast as the XL. It's 3 pin, so I can shoot 3 increments. 3 increments at 10 yard difference, so I got 10, 20, 30. Um, I already shot the first two, or the second pin, which is 30, and they were dead center on top of each other. Now I moved it down to 30 pin, 30 marks, so I'll be using the top pin here. So if this one is gone, I might just stop with this one and move back to 50. He's got real big mass on him. From the side, you see it better. He's got real big mass, super, super tall, big eye guards. Said nine, that's the five and a four. That's a nine, five, four, and he's, but he's not counting the little stickers on the, on his side. He's got two little stickers, not much, but he's an old, old deer. And which thing was that? Oh, blind. That was the, uh, the first one we went to. Okay. Seen the COs, they didn't. The second one is called fences, right? Yeah. And the first first one is called what? Um, elevated. Elevated. There he is again. Nighttime, you just can't see the. Uh, doesn't show the mass mm -hmm. like it should. He just hates that. Yeah. There he is again. How can you get down any trails? Like I said it's too dangerous. He's got. Uh, they say see the stickers on both sides. He's got full nine on this side. Mm -hmm. Super tall leg like, guards, and this is like I said, a giant buck. This will be a close to 300 pound deer. So you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised when you walk up to it and see how big those antlers are. He's got good mass, good length. See the head? How it looks like a horse head? Yeah. Is that an old deer? This pectoral stuff isn't this good. It's the regular stuff. This, was, I it for this is the one I was telling you about that comes out like in a half hour before dark. Remember I was telling yeah. you about that buck? That's what he's been doing. But I mean, rut coming on, he can easily pop it's out. Come on, a little time. bit earlier. Yeah. That Randy Butler from Safari. I can go through our saved ones too. He's like from Virginia or something. He's got a big bone. This is all right. So that's where that scrape is right there, the rear side. So your, your stand is over here, actually back here. Yeah. <laughs> Flip is pretty quick. Oh my god, Sandy. What? We've got a bear on. I'm elevated. elevated. What the heck? Mm. What's he doing there? It, those arrows will work on a bear too. <laughs> yeah, I got a tag. I've, I've killed one. I didn't get my bow kill, so just, this just could be a one. An there he is again. That same back. one. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many bears. We want him in the daytime. I would say do it. Yeah. <laughs>
after a long cold day, this will be the only deer that we saw on the sit. And it's hard to believe, but according to the guide, this was not a shooter. He was too young and needed time to grow. With the wind blowing directly in my face, meaning I'm downwind from the bait pile and the deer, no deer coming behind me, I was left in a confused state wondering what went wrong here. But this is the number two buck on the hit list for the week. And he, I had my opportunity and somehow he got my win. But sometimes this is hunting. Luckily for me, there was three days left. After this windage, this would be the last deer I will see for this day. What up, folks? Um, we had a different spot today. We had a tree stand, as you can see. We got the bait pile about 20 25 miles away from us. The uh, body suit. I'm all set up on it. Thank you. 
At first sight, I thought this was a different buck. Then after I picked up my Maven Binos and got a good look, I seen a little kicker on it. I knew this was the hitless buck. This was the one they sent me after. The time was now, and we had to make it count. For some reason on this hunt, all week, we continue to get winded by these deer. Always downwind, the deer were just smart. Somehow they would catch our wind, they would either stay behind the brush, they would come to the edge of the bait where they weren't fully exposed, or they would just barely stick their head out the brush, get a better scent of what they thought they were smelling, and take off. Unfortunately for them, on this hunt, it didn't bother them. Even with the other deer blowing in the background, and this being the biggest deer out here, he was still going to check his rub and make his way back out, giving me a shot. Mer
this eye.
Put up, folks. We back at the regular site. I got tons of blood. You see the arrow got chunks of heart or lung, whatever it is on that side. We know he's going down. We be in the rut. He ran. We kept. I think we jumped him and pushed him. So what we're gonna do now. He's gonna fall back for a little bit because fucking blood puddles everywhere. And we're just gonna let him die down naturally. We come back and grab him. Uh, but yeah, super pump. Got that big nine. I was talking about him last night. Yeah, we got him down today. Again, that fucking rage hypodermic opened up, no collar, no problem. Look at all that. Got his hair and everything. Alright, so I'm gonna load up, head back, and up. come back in a little bit. What's going on, folks? So we got the deer all loaded up and headed back. Uh, when we get back, I'll show you the video and footage of him. I ended up leaving the camera in the truck. I had to grab my boat just in case we had to put a finishing shot in, which we did. Uh, I literally walked right up on him. They was telling me where he was and I didn't even see him. He was bedded down, hiding up behind a log. And uh, I literally walked probably not even a foot, two foot right up on him. I had to step back and put a finishing shot at him because he was down, but still breathing and moving his head. Um, yeah, we gotta, of course, give a big thanks to the guy Sean here, the man came out there black bear hunting. Now I got this done, the uh, Saskatchewan whitetail. His uh, right hand man, Ryan, up in front of us. You know, we got it done. We had to, like he said, some prayer and the birds help us find them. We had to take, a, take some time off off the track, step back, sit in the truck, eat lunch, and we literally just rode down the road and we saw some birds circling. And they said, like, that, that deer got to be in there. Sure enough right where we said he was, right underneath the birds. There was another buck out there. It looked like he was getting ready to fight him. <laughs> out there making scrapes, circling him, and uh, led us right to him. So we're going to do the, the sign out at the camp so you guys can see the deer and take our pictures. And that's going to wrap up this episode in Saskatchewan. As for the hunting that part, we'll probably have some footage around the camp too. But uh, yeah, again, thank you, Sean. It was a team effort, buddy. It was a team, team effort. Uh, so you guys, Sandy, Lee, everybody, get everybody on camera tonight. Get some around the campfire talk, you know. Hunting isn't all about going out and killing. It's about the memories we build and the, the stories we share and the time we spend together. Amen. It has been an awesome, amazing time. We still got one more day here before we head back to uh, near the airport. And uh, I look forward to memories and stuff a couple you got some work to do uh, i gotta go to you're work gonna be you're gonna be baiting tomorrow <laughs> look, like, look like overtime about to go back on overtime my vacation just ended <laughs> fuck i should have waited i should have waited one more day to pull the trigger but it's all right i'm fine with putting in work i carry the load carry my weight you know show my thanks there he is old 11 point buck we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's in here letting them stiffen up so when we take the pictures. Learn a lot out here. Learn a lot. Look at the body on them. Yeah. There's a team, the right hand man and the man himself. He's a beauty. Got it done.
All right, folks, we're back at the cabin. I can't. About to sign out. Just finished the last dinner here. In Saskatchewan, we have some steak, oh, steak, oh, steak, potatoes, salad, beans, the Texas toast. Yeah, good company. Had a good time. Everybody here. We got the chef Sandy over there. So when y'all see my picture and I'm fat, like 250 pounds, you can thank her. Dana White, she's the reason I'm overweight. If I can't take a fight on short notice. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? They're just doing a sign out video from Kent. Yeah. Just showing on the person that made me on. fat. No, it's you're, too late. You already been here. Too late. Time, you already been on it. I'm Josh Berry. Ain't on time. time. Yeah, it was good. Definitely not on time, right there. Yeah. You want somebody that's gonna make you late? You don't like that guy. I promise you that. <laughs> you would not be on time. Nowhere near close. But uh, <laughs> we got Lee the Enforcer. We got Ryan the guy. Clint the Tire Man. And the man behind it all, Sean Lingle, made it all possible. We had a good time. Before we sign out, I got one more thing. I'll be right back. Ooh, a little gift for Sean and his wife. I'm not sure if I ever gave him that gift. Erase that quick. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. I never gave you any shirt. Nah. No, you didn't. Oh, well, here we go. You got one for you and Marnie now. All right. Next time you guys come out to the fight, you got the new ones. The slogan from Joe Rogan, it can only last so long. And I, gave you, I didn't have any more of these, but I gave you my own team over time. Perfect. Perfect. So there's one for you and one for Marnie. Thank you. Ah, and again, just saying thank you as always. When I go hunt with these guys, I go to someone's place, I leave them. Try to leave it better than I can, you know. Clean up after myself and present them with something from me just to say thank you. So again. That's going to sign out for this episode. And as always, we're going to sign out with love, peace, Afro-Greece, peace. <laughs>